taking time today. Uh, thank you, elected officials, Mayor Lane, city councilors, state representatives, county officials, keen state employees, uh, and, and citizens of District 10, uh, and even outlying areas, uh, for coming in and sharing this, this uh, public announcement of my candidacy with you. Hey, real story. I recently opened up a fortune cookie with a message. Seth, you are interested in public service and would make an outstanding statesman. <laughs> I want to say that the former has been evident from my first public service organization that I joined when I was 12 years old, titled the Friendship Corps an organization through which I traveled from my north side Chicago home to very different neighborhoods that shared culture and language and food and music and art that were quite different from the neighborhood that I grew up in. As distinct as the kids in each of those neighborhoods were, we learned together how similar we were. We had a curiosity, a respect for each other, that went beyond our neighborhoods. We had an optimism about our future and a confidence that we could make a difference and a willingness to work together. It's those characteristics, along with my family and friends, that still provide energy to my life. Curiosity, respect, optimism, persistence to achieve a goal, and teamwork. Wander down the halls of Keene High School and you'll find these traits on the door outside of India Lawrence's junior classroom, junior English classroom. She is just one of many dedicated teachers and faculty in this community that inspire young minds. You inspired me. <laughs> Relative to the part about statesmanship, well, it's in my very near future. I am thrilled to stand here today before you and share that I have filed to run for the New Hampshire State Senate District 10 Democrat nomination. <laughs> the response to my candidacy has been terrific. People throughout Senate District 10 Tell me they're excited and relieved to have a person of my background running to succeed Senator Molly Kelly. With the 43 years of public finance work that I have, the experience of working and leading, being an executive and board leader, uh, being, having a PhD in political science like Chuck Lee, <laughs> but mine's in policy studies. Uh, and I am prepared to address the challenges faced by the state of New Hampshire. And as a distance runner, not a fast one, <laughs> not a persistent one, no. <laughs> I have the energy and stamina to vigorously advocate for the citizens and institutions in Cheshire County. It is significant to me that I'm announcing my candidacy here at Keene State College where 28 years ago I was recruited to join the Keene and New Hampshire communities. And one of my first observations of this state was that despite it having 240 communities and towns, how easy it was to get to know people across the state, almost like a county in a more heavily populated area. And over those 28 years, I have cultivated a strong network of well-informed and engaged citizens statewide, not the least of which is the Keene State College alumni, which somebody already said that I'm so proud of this, will this week honor me as a lifetime member. I have an optimistic outlook for the state of New Hampshire, and it's founded on growing our population and our economy through good paying work opportunities. Yes, we should be proud of New Hampshire's 2.6% unemployment rate, 2.3% in the greater Keene area. However, unemployment rates at low levels also signal a 
shrinking workforce. Something could, that could hamper economic growth and make it difficult for businesses and organizations to replace retiring workers. I'm not going to say there's a magic bullet. But building a workforce and expanding this state's economy will take a coordinated, well thought out set of values and directions for our state, which I will continue to discuss with you during this election and in the state senate. My highest priority is to preserve and promote the quality of life in New Hampshire, away from its maddening crowds of metropolitan areas, embraced by our natural environment, and yet connected to the world. But in order to preserve our vibrancy as a state, we need to attract and retain younger workers, their families, and it is essential to our future. Government is not going to be the sole answer to this question, but government needs to be a partner in economic growth and in promoting New Hampshire's quality of life. To be state leaders in an innovative economy requires the ability to form coordinated partnerships of government, business, education, and not-for-profits. And here, my track record is deep. I helped, and George Scott is present in the room, we helped create Manadna, the first internet service provider in the Manadnock region. I helped create the business and education intersection in the community through the Regional Center for Advanced Manufacturing, ARCAN. I helped establish ACASA, Court Appointed Special Advocates, ACASA program in Keene to support abused and neglected kids in Southwest New Hampshire. And I led establishing the Greater Keene Chamber of Commerce Workforce Coordinator position. And I helped leverage business incentives to bring jobs into this region when I led the Manadnock Economic Development Corporation's Board of Directors. Cheshire County is often viewed by others across the state as an independent, highly collaborative area that addresses its problems innovatively. But our view of virtue can become an excuse for state government to sidestep this region when it comes to expanding economic opportunities and attracting young people. Our 2030 challenge is to grow businesses, foster innovation, retain young people in this region. Innovative people are attracted to areas where people are innovating. We need to be a region that's fostering innovation. The CEO of a leading New Hampshire employer recently told me, a product advantage can be made up by your competition in six months. But if you have a personnel advantage, it will take your competitors six years to catch up. Our state government, in concert with business and local governments, needs to promote Cheshire County as a progressive, well-educated, beautiful region to live and to work. And to continue to mold this message, we need to give greater attention to our infrastructure. My second priority then is assuring educational opportunity at all ages, early childhood, quality public schools, affordable colleges, and innovative and relevant workforce training and development. As the son of immigrant parents who fled persecution, I know the value of liberty and opportunity. One of my first political arguments with my mom occurred during the Civil Rights era. I said this country would never again be one that inhibited liberty with bias and oppression, to which she replied, as a 12-year-old in Germany, I thought the same thing. Her fear has helped motivate my passion for lifelong education and for public service. I recognize the value of education not just as a means for a more fulfilling life, but as an essential element of a democratic society. Thomas Dewey described education as the socioeconomic escalator 
and equalizer in a democracy. It is the basis for creating a Keene Normal School. By the time I was 37 years old and moving to Keene to become its youngest vice president, I had been engaged in some form of education for all but three years since I had been five years old. And I had been working from the time I was 13 to support those goals. Everyone deserves and needs educational opportunities throughout their lives for our development as individuals, to nurture our families, to become engaged in our communities, for our professional lives, and to prepare for life's transitions. Beginning with early childhood development, the statistics of learning differentials during the first five years of life are staggering. Up to 30 million more words are spoken to kids with in-home care. Kids with nurturing parents and preschool have up to 6,000 more hours of engagement by the time they enter kindergarten. In this community, the work of Impact and NADNA, the New Hampshire Charitable Fund, and Spark New Hampshire at the statewide level, they're breaking new ground, and government needs to support these opportunities to equalize opportunity for kids and their parents across the state. I will lead government in their engagement in these efforts. <coughs> we need to create a respectful environment for public school teachers that will attract bright students to teaching careers and give teachers the liberty to shape a curricu curriculum that inspires students. And we need to encourage dual enrollment that enables all high schoolers to earn college credit while in high school, creating a smooth transition to a New Hampshire college. Currently, 48% of high school students going straight to college attend out of state. The in-state price to attend a public New Hampshire college are the highest in the country, which leads to one of the highest outward migrations in the country. We need to do better to retain our youth in this state. One way I'll work to retain our younger population is to introduce legislation to freeze the in-state price of public higher education. <laughs> it works. While interim president of Keene State College, I helped sign up 1,000 advocates for a tuition freeze and worked across the state to see that freeze signed into law for two years. And Keene State saw the effectiveness of this strategy through which more in-state students chose to attend in-state colleges. And one known way of retaining college graduates in-state is to create internship incentives to help businesses tap and nurture young minds and to demonstrate the work and lifestyle possibilities in this region and state. Internships are critical in a region with over 6,000 college students with 2,000 students graduating annually. I will continue the work I am doing with the New Hampshire Coalition of Business and Education to incentivize more businesses and schools to join this effort. And additionally, we need to leverage state and federal funds to provide workforce continuing education to sustain the professional workforce in New Hampshire. Education access is not entirely an additive priority. Efficiencies need to be implemented and incentives provided to take the risk to change the way we do things today. And I will promote discussions to trade off what is not essential to our future for what is essential to our workforce needs and to providing an engaged citizenry. A third sentence. I thought I'd get you. <laughs> as an essential element for keeping health insurance costs competitive. 
I will support Planned Parenthood and a woman's right to choose their desired health care and where they wish to obtain it. One result of chairing the Cheshire Medical Center's Board of Trustees is that I recognize the way to achieve efficiencies is through aligning services to share expertise and reduce overhead, to make better uses of technology, and to broaden engagement in community health through programs like Healthy Menadox 2020 initiative. These innovations and transformations need to be supported statewide. And in order to preserve healthcare access and choice, we need to assure reasonable reimbursement to medical providers of Medicaid and Medicare services. People locally fear that health care services will contract under current state and federal reimbursement levels. I look forward to representing the interests of District 10, Cheshire County, and its citizens first and foremost through my optimism, experience, abundant energy, and with your help and support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me in this effort, and I look forward to representing you.